Hello and welcome to Matters of Decorum. I'm Scott Corum and here's what matters to me. When you put two different words together, these two particular words, you start getting a really unusual reaction. Those two words are lightsaber and nunchucks. Now, the first reaction that you get when you do that, you post those two words together on Facebook or other social media, mention them in a conversation, and invariably, the first reaction you're going to get is someone going, ooh, that's a bad idea. Now, I have a little familiarity with both of these subjects. As far as the lightsaber portion of it goes, I was one of those people standing in line all the way around a movie theater in 1977 to see Star Wars six times in the theater. I followed it from that first viewing through every movie and every iteration of a role-playing game that has had to do with Star Wars in the meantime. Uh, the West End D6, the D6 clones that came after it, D20 Saga Edition. I haven't touched on the Fantasy Flight Edition yet, but I've viewed enough of it to be familiar with it. I've even written some supplementary information for it for a fan project for my own victory system. Uh, I know lightsabers, as well as anyone can know a fictional weapon. Uh, so, on top of that, I've been studying Okinawan martial arts and Okinawan weapon forms since I was 18, um, including the tonfa, the sai, bow staff, and uh, of course the nunchaku. I have a functional understanding of how they work. I may have fallen out of practice a little bit, but I do know something about the practice and training of them. And when I put those two concepts together, I don't automatically come up with them being a bad idea. So I thought I would discuss this. A couple of ground rules for this discussion. One, I'm not saying that lightsaber nunchucks are a good idea. I'm saying that they're no worse of an idea than lightsabers themselves. A weapon whose functional portion is an automatic amputation is pretty much a bad thing to have to practice with no matter what form you're using with it. And it's going to take a lot of training. So, lightsaber nunchucks, not a good idea, not a worse idea than a lightsaber. Two, uh, I will be doing some demonstration in this particular video. I'm not a Jedi Knight. I'm not a fit martial artist. I'm a 46-year-old overweight author who knows a little bit about these things and has puttered with them for a few decades. So, uh, where I will make a mistake, uh, I will have not only my weight and general horrible physical condition to fall back on as an excuse, but my crippling lack of midichlorians. I'm not a force user. I'm sorry, that's as close as I'm going to get. That being said, let's break this down into the two different portions of the discussion and then put them together. Lightsabers. Now, I'm not saying that a full-sized lightsaber with its classical meter-long blade is what you want to have strung between two chains. That's not how nunchucks work or are configured. However, in the extended universe and in some episodes of Clone Wars, we see a Shoto lightsaber, a lightsaber with a shorter blade, a uh, wakizashi to the lightsaber's katana. And that's more like what we're talking about. It has more of the length and the functionality uh, that we're looking for in a portion of nunchucks. Things that we will not be seeing. No lightsaber chain between the handles. No one handle and one whole blade at the other end of a chain. Two functioning Shoto lightsabers. Now, like 
a regular lightsaber. The first time you pick up one of these instruments and start to use it, you're probably not going to have it functioning at its full intensity. Lightsabers are adjustable. Master Yoda did not hand a whole bunch of fully functional lightsabers to a bunch of children, blindfold them, and then stand in the middle of them going, Mmm, the survivor we will train, yes! No. You reduce the intensity of a lightsaber to train with it. Likewise, you reduce the intensity of your lightsaber nunchucks to train with them. It's not an automatic decapitation or castration the first time you pick them up and start using them. You train with them in a more usable manner. Lightsaber. Nunchucks. Of which I have an actual pair, well, padded, but if we're talking about using a Shoto configuration of lightsaber for our nunchucks, we have to consider that we're not holding the nunchuck much past that, so we don't have access to the whole nunchucku handle, which is fine. Very few people actually use the whole handle. You don't want to use the whole handle. The reason for that. If you look at people using a pair of nunchucks, particularly hand-to-hand -hand passes or single-hand release uh, technique passes, you'll see that they're holding the lightsaber close to the swivel. There's a number of reasons for that, not the least of which is you want to retain control of the direction of the swing. You want to contain control of where the nunchuck is going. You want to know that you've got that other handle on a fairly tight leash. It's physics. Uh, as you swing a set of nunchucks around, you develop torque. You develop rotational force or centrifugal force uh, against this end of the lightsaber. This is a lever. Your, fist, your hand is a fulcrum. The further from your fulcrum your force is applied, the more force you're applying to the fulcrum. If I'm swinging like this, I'm going to get out of control very quickly. This is the area that you want to be holding anyway. Whether you are using an overhand grip or an underhand grip, you need to have control of the upper end of this handle. This area that we are theoretically contemplating being made of pure force isn't something your hand is going to come in contact with anyway. In fact, as you see during a demonstration of the use of these things, rarely are you going to find that bottom portion coming in contact with anything else. You do bounce the nunchucks off a portion of your body in order to get them moving faster, look flashy, facilitate passes, but there's no reason to do it from here. You want that lever, that fulcrum of the point of contact with your body, again, being as close to the swivel as you can possibly get it. If I'm passing it around my waist or over my shoulder, I'm collecting most of that contact here. If I'm doing the traditional placement of the second handle under my arm when I am in a resting pose, still only coming in contact with the upper end of the nunchaku. So, that being said, I made a set of practical lightsaber nunchucks, not actual lightsaber nunchucks, but something that would do. A couple of differences between lightsaber blades and pool noodles while I'm at it. Um, lightsaber blades do not generate that much wind resistance. Pool noodles generate a great deal. Two, I practiced with this weapon for about three hours. Not a lifetime, not the amount of time that a Jedi or a Sith would put into a weapon like this. Three, again, no midichlorians, not a Jedi. If I was a Jedi, I'd have a lot more people watching my channel right now. So, as you can see in this demonstration, 
I'm not grabbing the lightsaber portion of the hand. I'm not bouncing the lightsaber portion off of my body or catching it under my arm by the lightsaber portion. Where you do see contact between me and the pool noodle, usually on a forearm, is mostly down to the fact that the pool noodle is three times as wide as the rest of the nunchuck. Were it slightly thinner, like a lightsaber blade would be, I probably would not have had that problem. Where you see small errors like that, bits of contact between me and the margin of error around the pool noodle, well, I'm not a force user. Even when you're training with a lightsaber, you don't wield it the way you wield a normal blade. Every role-playing game out there has a special ability, uh, a feat, or a, a force power that allows a Jedi or a Sith to use a lightsaber properly. It's not like a regular sword. There's additional torque and rotational forces involved. There's no blade to balance for. It's a force power to use a lightsaber correctly. I can't imagine it wouldn't also be a force power to use a pair of lightsaber nunchucks correctly. So, as bad an idea as it is, for someone who knows nothing about the force and cannot use its abilities to wield a lightsaber, well, yeah, it would be just as bad an idea for someone like that to use a pair of lightsaber nunchucks. It's a bad idea to use a pair of nunchucks without prior training, too. If you're training with them properly, well, I have a padded pair. I have a padded pair for a reason. That's what I train with, even today. I've got an acrylic pair. I've wielded wooden pairs in the past. And like everyone who has trained with a pair of nunchucks, I have clobbered myself good and proper upside my head numerous times. Oh, and yes, I've taken more than my share of hits in the groin from my pair of nunchucks. It happens. Just like no one ever makes the first jump in the jumping program in the Matrix, no one ever trains with a pair of nunchucks and doesn't start off by clobbering themselves in the head and the groin. You're swinging a free-flying flail with no idea of how to control it across the center line of your body, both up and down. Yeah, head, groin, common. I've heard it mentioned that, yes, you can train all you want with a safer version, but the moment you pick up a pair of actual lightsaber nunchucks, you will immediately cut off your head. And that's not how muscle memory works. If you've trained with the proper training tools, uh, in the case of actual nunchucks, pads, or a padded pair of nunchucks, uh, at least a cup, please. If you're doing this, at least wear a cup. Think of the children. Then, the first time you pick up a pair of actual nunchucks, you're not automatically going to start clobbering yourself in the groin willy-nilly. You've developed the reflex arcs, that allow you to not do that, at least not that often or not while you're doing things that you've trained to do with. Them. Another comment that I've heard is, well, how do you stop a thrust with a pair of nunchucks? If someone's swinging or thrusting at you with a lightsaber, how is your lightsaber nunchucks going to protect you? Well, the way that I'd protect myself from a sword with a regular pair of nunchucks by not swinging one end around. This right here is a perfectly good short defensive weapon. So is that. Whole thing about using a pair of nunchucks is that they're an adaptation of something that wasn't originally a weapon. This is a model of an Okinawan rice flail, farming implement, used because swords were denied to the population that developed these martial arts. It's all about improvisation and adaptation. Just because you've got two handles on a chain doesn't mean that the only use for them is grabbing one handle and swinging the other one around. Many defensive techniques using nunchaku rely upon you 
keeping a firm grip on both of them. No reason not to use a pair of lightsaber nunchucks exactly the same way to deflect a blow from the side or from the front. One thing that has been mentioned that's a terribly valid point is that her lightsaber nunchucks wouldn't have much reach. We are talking about Shoto lightsabers, and they're not going to have the reach of a regular set of lightsabers. Just like nunchucks don't have the reach of a regular sword. This is a street weapon. This is meant to fight up close and personal. It's meant to deflect a blow away from you and perhaps allow you to get in close enough to do some good with them. But while we're on the subject of defense, let's take a moment to talk about lightsaber resistant materials. This is important because this is canon. This isn't even extended universe stuff. Palpatine's paired lightsabers are cased in Frick. Frick is an alloy that is extremely resistant to lightsabers. You can use it to parry or block a few lightsaber blows. It not only looks pretty good, as it has a silvery goldish electrum kind of tint to it, but it allows an item to stand up to a few lightsaber hits. Of course, there's always Mandalorian iron. The iron used by the Mandalorians, or mined and produced by them, carries a unique magnetic field that allows it to interact strongly with the magnetic field around a lightsaber blade. That allows it to parry, block, catch a lightsaber. Not for long, but can block and parry lightsabers. The Magna Guards in the prequel series, the droid assistants to General Grievous, used staves that had magnetic bubbles around them, which allowed them to parry lightsaber blades. And if you're going to go to the outside of reason, you have Cortosis Weave, a toxic substance which can be processed into a material that shorts out a lightsaber blade on contact. If I'm making a pair of lightsaber nunchaku, I'm going to invest in some of these materials. My handles are going to be cased in either Frick or Mandalorian iron, or perhaps a alloy of the two. My chain and swivels are certainly going to be composed of Frick, and if I'm being a dick about it, I'm going to take just that center link of my chain and not only compose it of Frick, but I'm going to wrap it in Kurtosis Weave. So if I am using a standard nunchaku weapon entanglement technique, not only will I be able to block the lightsaber blade with my chain, but as I go for the wrap, I'm shorting out the blade. And then I have a pair of fully functional blades where my opponent has just lost their primary defense. Properly constructed, a pair of lightsaber nunchaku can be trained with, practiced with, and wielded effectively against an opponent with a lightsaber or even opponents without, far more effectively than an opponent without a lightsaber. Plus which, they look really cool. That's not a small thing. Lightsabers are an intimidation weapon. They're a mark of honor, a badge for the Jedi, and an intimidation point for the Sith. You pull out a lightsaber, you automatically earn yourself a little bit of respect. A lot, if someone really understands what that weapon can do. If you start whipping around you with a pair of lightsaber nunchucks, people will back off. Some of them, because they think that you're about to cut a part of you off and they might get blood on them. But the others, because they understand that what you are wielding is a lightsaber chainsaw that requires a huge amount of skill, training, and dedication to use correctly. 
block it. And as long as I have a good grip close to my swivel, I choose where it's redirected once you've taken the momentum away from it. Strike at me. I parry with a dual blade and with a stronger lever arm than the blow being thrown. Then I can step in, locking up the attacking blade, and I've got a free hand. So, wielding a poorly made pair of lightsaber nunchucks, bad idea. Wielding a pair of lightsaber nunchucks at full power when you have never wielded one before, bad idea. Wielding a pair of lightsaber nunchucks when you do not have the midichlorian count necessary to counter for the margin of error that you don't have. Swinging a pair of lightsabers around, bad idea. But in the context of the Star Wars universe, certainly the extended universe, but even within the canon universe, lightsaber nunchucks aren't a bad idea. If you know how to use them, and have all the talents to use them. They're actually not only a really good idea, they'll look really awesome. I'm Scott Coram. This is what matters to me. I'll see you next time on Matters of Decorum.